So Blonde was directed by Andrew Dominic and it is a fictionalized take on the life and career of American superstar Marlon Monroe. This is the newest film from Netflix and it will premiere on the streaming service on Wednesday, September 28th. Therefore, considering the fact that this film isn't even out yet, of course, this will be a spoiler-free review. Now, before I give you all my thoughts on the film, I have to thank the Vancouver International Film Festival for inviting us to an advanced screening of this film. It was a great experience, we had a lot of fun, and I just want to let you all know that we really, really appreciate it. Now, I'll begin by saying that I was very much looking forward to this film. I am a huge fan of Anna de Armas and her body of work, I thought the trailers looked absolutely amazing, and when I heard about this film getting a 14-minute standing ovation at the Venice Film Festival, I couldn't help but get excited. And now, having watched the movie, I am very happy to say that I thought it was great. Now, something that I do want to make very clear is that this film won't be for everyone. I thought it was great, and I see a lot of artistic value in it, but that doesn't mean that everyone will. This is gonna be, and already is, a very, very polarizing film. And, honestly, there are three main reasons why I think this film won't be for everyone. First of all, this is a very long film with a very slow pace. It has a runtime of 2 hours and 46 minutes, and the movie is full of slow-paced scenes that can feel redundant or repetitive. Second of all, this is an extremely unconventional film. The story is told out of order, the aspect ratio is constantly changing, and the film constantly shifts from being in black and white and in color. Also, throughout the film, it is very hard to distinguish the scenes that are happening inside the protagonist's head and those that are actually happening in real life. And third, the last reason why I think this film won't be for everyone is because Blonde is not a fun movie. Blonde is constantly sad and relentlessly tragic. This is not a biopic like King Richard or Bohemian Rhapsody. It is not a movie that will make you feel happy and inspired while you're watching it. This is a depressing film. And I guarantee you that if you watch Blonde, you are constantly going to feel miserable for this fictionalized version of Marlon Monroe. So yeah, this film is relentless in its portrayal of the dark side of Marlon Monroe's life. You don't get a lot of scenes where she's just having fun or enjoying life. Instead, for the majority of the film, she is extremely miserable, sad, and lonely. While watching this movie, the film just kept hitting me with one tragedy after another, and it honestly got to the point where I, I just felt like I couldn't take it anymore, you know? It became really exhausting to see every tragedy that this character has to live through. That said, it was at that moment, it was at that point of peak exhaustion, when I think I realized that my reaction to this film is probably exactly what the filmmaker intended. This movie is meant to put you in the shoes of this fictionalized version of Marlon Monroe, and in doing that, it succeeds tremendously. Just like this character is constantly exhausted and feeling like she can't take it anymore, we feel the exact same way. So yes, this film is not fun to watch. It is not enjoyable. But I'm afraid it is not meant to be. Blonde is not fun or pleasant. It is a tragedy. A tragedy about a woman who's no longer able to recognize the person that she has become. A woman who desperately wants to be loved, but all she can find is abuse. And a woman who, despite all her many talents, is only ever viewed as a piece of meat. And that brings me to my next point, which is the film's title. I love this film's title because I think it perfectly reflects the reductive way in which people view Marlon Monroe. Even though Marlon Monroe was an extremely talented actress, a great singer, a very intelligent person, and an exceptionally well-read individual, most people only remember her as the girl who had her dress blown up by the wind coming out of a subway vent, and as the blonde one. The entire legacy of this very talented woman has been reduced to simply her looks, and that is something that this movie very much critiques. In this film, the entire world only values Marlon Monroe for her looks, and the saddest thing is that after being seen in this light by everyone around her, Marlon Monroe actually begins to believe that they are right, that she is nothing more than a dumb blonde. Now, moving on, when it comes to the performances in this film, all I will say is that Ana de Armas gives the best performance of her career. She is absolutely amazing as Marlon Monroe, and she nailed all the physicality and mannerisms that a role such as this one requires. And if you don't believe me, here's how I'll put it. Throughout the film, they show us clips from classic Marlon Monroe films such as Some Like It Hot, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, and Niagara. The clips are taken straight from the movies. That said, they remove the original Marlon Monroe and replace her with Ana de Armas. Well, Ana de Armas' performance is so incredible that I barely even noticed. 
Now, when it comes to the visuals, I thought this film had some of the most beautiful and interesting visuals I've seen all year. As I said previously, this film style is very unconventional and absolutely insane. The movie's constantly changing from black and white to color and from one aspect ratio to another. That said, I believe it worked. And the reason why I believed it worked is because I could find a lot of meaning behind the film's visuals. For instance, there is a scene where Marlon Monroe is feeling trapped, imprisoned in her own life, and in this precise moment, the aspect ratio changes. As Marlon Monroe is feeling trapped, the black bars at the left and right side of the screen slowly close in on her, literally trapping her within the frame. Now, this film isn't perfect, and there are some things that I think could have been better. For instance, even though Ana de Armas' performance is truly exceptional, I do believe that her accent is not as great as I wish it would be. Similarly, even though I love most of the unconventional visuals in this film, I feel like some of them felt so random and inconsistent that, at points, it just started feeling as visuals that were unconventional simply for the sake of it. And lastly, I believe that the film is a bit too long and I feel like there are some redundant or repetitive moments that could have been cut out or reduced significantly. So in conclusion, more than a conventional biopic, Blonde is a tragic psychological horror that tells the story of a woman who no longer recognizes who she is. It's so long, so unconventional, and so hard to watch that I know for sure this film won't be for everyone. But what can I say? It was for me. If I were to give it a score in between 1 to 10, I would give it an 8 out of 10, which means I thought this film was great. Now, for those of you who don't know, Take One is doing a giveaway right now. We have partnered with the Vancouver International Film Festival, and thanks to them, we're going to be giving away tickets for this year's festival. If you find yourself in Vancouver and you want to go to the 41st edition of the Vancouver International Film Festival, this is your chance. All you have to do is subscribe to this channel, follow our Instagram account, at Take One Show, like the giveaway post, and tag a friend in the comments. The giveaway closes on September 27 at 11.59pm, and the winners will be announced on September 28 at noon. So what are you waiting for? Participate in the giveaway and, who knows, you might win some free tickets for this year's Vancouver International Film Festival. Good luck. Ooh.